Now, let's cut the blue button jelly in half. When we slice it like this, an astonishing fact is revealed. But first, what exactly is the blue button jelly? Can you see this here? Near the dock, I found clusters of blue button jellies that had been left behind without drifting away. They look a bit like mold, but these are blue button jellies. I scooped some into a container and, wearing gloves, took a closer look. The blue button jelly is called the blue button in English. They may look different from one another, but that's because some individuals have drifted in the waves for a long time and lost their tentacles. This oddly shaped one here has its body flipped inside out. If you turn it over, you can see it actually looks just like the others. So the difference in appearance is simply whether it's facing up or down. At first, the blue button jelly seems motionless. But if you watch carefully, you'll see its tentacles contract. Strange, isn't it? They can swim a little, but rather than actively swimming, the blue button jelly drifts with the current. That's why you'll find them more often in calmer waters like this, rather than in rougher waves. The blue button jelly belongs to the phylum Cnidaria and the class Hydroza, just like Hydras and the Portuguese Man of War. Like corals, Hydrozoans form colonies made up of many individual polyps, or zoids, that live together as one. If you look closely at the blue button jelly, you can see the many zoids that make up its body. It may look like the tentacles are only around the rim, but when placed in water, you can see tentacles also extend downward. Each of these tentacles belongs to an individual zoid that makes up the colony. Fascinating, isn't it? These zoids each have different roles. The zoids around the edge are responsible for hunting and catching prey. The zoids arranged around the central part handle reproduction. On the underside, in the center, are feeding zoids that eat and digest food. Because these zoids share a digestive canal, the nutrients taken in by the feeding zoids are distributed throughout the whole colony. On the upper surface of the blue button jelly is a flotation structure that keeps it buoyant, allowing the colony to drift across the sea. Still, isn't it amazing how all these polyps can move in unison? To understand this better, I decided to cut one in half. When I observed it, I was surprised that even when divided in two, both halves still contracted separately. This happens because, just as the digestive system is shared, the nerve net is also shared. Even when cut apart, the nerve net remains, so each half can still contract. Strange, isn't it? Finally, as I observed the jelly cut in half, I noticed that both pieces seemed to try to repeatedly rejoin. Thinking, surely not, I tested it more carefully, keeping the halves apart. Uh-oh. Hmm? It turned out to be just a coincidence. That aside, whenever we're curious about something, running experiments like this to find out is exactly what science is all about. That's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel. This was Fishy Science, using science to unravel the mysteries of nature.